the last part of this lecture and the last part of this series is going to be some, some info on further reading and further papers and books and things like that. So there's, there's a bunch of papers that are, in a sense, cornerstones of the field or have become cornerstones and are containing a lot of useful information and background. For the spe special case of event-related potentials, there is a paper uh, from 2011 um, that is basically a tutorial on how to do it properly. Uh, Benjamin Blankes, uh, by the way, um, the slides themselves are also, of course, online. So um, if something is not entirely legible, um, that shouldn't be much of a problem. And the people who wrote this are basically, um, is the Berlin, Berlin Brain Computer Interface. These have been uh, the main drivers of, of BCI technology for the last 10 or 15 years or so in Europe and Germany. There is another um, overview paper uh, that talks about common spatial patterns, which we already discussed, and regularized versions of that and unified theory and so on. It's a very, very good coverage of all the different ways of squeezing the most out of this algorithm and dealing with oscillatory processes by Fabian Lod. Then um, this sophisticated uh, approach, which primarily is based on low rank assumptions and convex optimization, which applies to ERP analysis and oscillatory process analysis, is something that was originally proposed by Tomioka and Miller in 2010. And they have a very good paper on that called Irregularized Discriminative Framework for EG Analysis with the Application to Brain-Computer Interface. There is, um, there's, a, there's some other papers. Um, so for example, here's a good paper that describes the entire pipeline that this group has, Blankers et al. Um, there, it's an oscillatory process BCI based on CSP. They basically describe the entire process from raw data to the, the figures that you put into their papers, pretty much. Yeah, and here's a nice um, novelty uh, approach. It, this is actually done by one of our collaborators uh, on beamforming approaches to brain-computer interface. So this is an alternative trajectory into this idea of source localized methods. There is a few survey papers which cover a lot broader um, you know, topics, of course, than, than, than the papers I had before. So here's a survey of various signal processing algorithms that are applicable in brain-computer interfaces. Um, you know, uh, this is from 2007, so there's certainly more <laughs> that have accumulated since then. Another one is a review of classification methods. So that's also 2007. And in a sense, these two cover the main two areas, of course, you know, um, signal processing and machine learning. Here's also our own review that we have on, which goes more across the board and looks into the future and so on, evolving signal processing for brain-computer interfaces, also interesting. And then there's a few g technical papers that are just generally interesting. There's David Whipp and Sri Nagarajan who were, was talking about unified source localization with distributed source models. It's a really nice um, Bayesian approach. It's highly recommended to read that. There is um, a very good paper on connectivity estimation with, with EEG uh, with, an, with the idea of eventually moving to BCI applications from Stefan Hofer. There is the paper on ADMM and the alternating direction method of multipliers, which is this optimization framework um, for by Stephen Boyd and, and et al. This is, uh, this is highly recommended. It's a 70-page monograph. And um, there is uh, one paper which talks specifically about the, the virtues of sparsity, uh, which is from Zhao and Yu on model selection consistency of Lasso. So they, they are one of the first to really formally describe um, the, you know, and, and prove the ability of certain kinds of sparse methods to, f to deal with exponentially many variables, which, which is one of the cornerstones of, of what many people are doing today. Uh, there's a few others. Um, there's work on multimodal learning, which is relevant to anyone who wants to go across EEG and other modalities. There's, um, there's some interesting work, of course, from the fMRI literature uh, as well, such as uh, you know these recent uh, nature papers and so on, where people reconstructed uh, pictures from visual cortex of a person or reconstructed, in fact, videos and so on. So these are certainly useful to read and it's fairly advanced methodology as well. There's, um, there's a new direction in neuroscience, um, which is to have brain state, uh, you know, sort of um, 
brain state dependent manipulations and neuroscience experiments to have, in a sense, dynamic neuroscience experiments that depend on an estimate of cognitive state of the person. And that requires BCI technology somewhere in the loop. And so here's a paper on that, one of the first ones. And here's an interesting paper on, on a new direction in sensors. This is epidermal electronics, which I had in the first, um, first lecture. There is a few researchers that one should definitely watch, <laughs> um, just to conclude. There is the Vernon BCI group, uh, which is um, basically the group of Klaus Robert Miller. And they have most of their papers online as PDFs. They have been active since about 2000 or something like that. And so if you go through this, it's basically a history of, of the cutting edge of BCI from 2000 to 2013 or so. You can really go chronologically and just read all that. And after that, you know most of the things that are in this lecture, basically. There is another person who has really has been pushing the bar uh, in, in the BCI field who is now looking into other areas. But they have interesting papers. Marcel van Gerven from the Donners Institute. There is Ryota Tomioka from Tokyo who has you know, who came up with this low rank approach to EEG analysis and so on. And he has some other very interesting methodological papers. He's now moving away from, from EEG and so on and going into purely theoretical areas. There is Frist et al, who are, you know, the neuroimaging pros <laughs> who created SPM uh, in, in fMRI tools, etc. So they have lots of very interesting technical publications. They also touch on EEG analysis. They, you know, in some of the methods, they are also Bayesian people to some extent and so on. Very interesting to follow. And then, of course, there's uh, lots of statisticians and machine learners who are having publication websites. Most of them have their papers online and who are doing really interesting work, like Michael Jordan, Andrew Eng, Lawrence Curran, Zubin, uh, you know, it's very hard to pronounce his name here, Garamani or so, uh, Francis Bach, the French guy, Geoff Hinton with the neural networks, Ruslan Zalakhutinov, Ye Wei Te, um, David Blind, there's many more. Um, so it's, it's really, really recommended to check their web pages and just check what these guys are publishing on, read some of their papers. Um, there's people who are strong in the Bayesian area, people who are strong in sparsity and convexity and all that, people who are just really good statisticians, people who are pushing the neural network areas and so on. And all of that is, of course, uh, relevant in, you know, also to BCI research and interesting in itself, of course. And that um, concludes uh, you know, the, the further reading section. And that ends the whole lecture. So um, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, <laughs> if you have any questions or uh, suggestions or so, just email me. You will find my email address on and our center address on the website.